So at this year's ASH meeting, there really are two important phase three studies, both looking at interferon, specifically long-acting interferons, as upfront therapy for patients with polycythemia vera uh, and or essential thrombocythemia. The first, a study through the MPD Research Consortium, is pegylated interferon alpha-2A, uh, the product made by Genentech or Roche uh, that is known as Pegasus. This versus hydroxyurea. The second, uh, a drug both from Taiwan and Austria called AOP2014 or P1101 that is a rho peg interferon alpha 2b. Slightly different molecules, similar trial designs. In that study done in uh, Austria and Eastern Europe, pegylated interferon versus hydroxyurea in P. vera. What both studies show is one, interferon is very active in this group of patients. Uh, and at least in the first year, in these ongoing studies, is non-inferior to hydroxyurea for reduction of thrombotic events, for uh, tolerability, for control of counts, uh, and for impact on bone marrow features and things of that nature. Longer term data is available solely with the ROPEG interferon, the alpha-2b compound, where they are seeing that there is superiority in terms of molecular responses after that first year of time. So it takes a while to kind of fully kick in at a molecular level, but then over time seems to have superiority in terms of disease control. To some degree, as we look at that entire portfolio, it was a bit of our expectation. We know it's active. We know Hydrea is very active in this first group. However, over time, things probably lean to favor the pegylated interferon. In parallel, I present our uh, symptom and quality of life metrics done serially with the MPDRC study. And with that, we identify both drugs do have an impact on symptoms. They might be slightly differential impact on symptoms. The interferon is probably more rapidly uh, active in terms of improving disease-associated symptoms, both high counts, uh, as symptoms associated with high counts such as headaches, erythromyalgia, things of that nature. Uh, and over time, we see a little bit of flu-like symptoms being kind of a persistent theme for individuals on pegylated interferon, but typically at a, at a tolerable level. So in aggregate, it really brings very important phase three data for the first time with interferons to this group of diseases. Uh, and as these studies play out, we'll have a better sense of how they're best positioned in terms of treating these patients.